beep 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 hello Chester I promised you yesterday I'd do a bit on Judy Birchall and it would be remiss of me not to keep my promise to you so here we go right this is spectacularly good right spectacularly good Judy Birchall I love it there was one point where I was blocked by Judy Birchall and it was an error. So I had to send a message to somebody and say, look, can you tell Judy to unblock me? So Judy unblocked me. And then sent a message saying, bloody tech. Or something like that. <laughs> Very practical, down-to-earth, uh, uh, thinking individual, our Judy. We like that, Judy Birchall. To those of you who are idiots, this is also Judy Bindle. They are the same person. How that keeps happening, I've no idea. And it must drive Judy Bindle mad. At least it's not a man on a train with a packet of crisps. Right, so. <laughs> oh, this is glorious. Okay, the links are in the doobries, right? Oh, adverts going up next week for the Warrior Teacher Programme in April. Right, so get ready. It's coming. Um, I put the link in the doobries. This is an article from Spiked Online. Written by the marvellous Judy Birchall. Um, there's a great cartoon picture of her as well that goes with it. That's worth a look. Um, which is great. Um, and it's entitled, Beware the Wolves in Used Clothing. Isn't that wonderful? A play there on Little Red Riding Hood to a certain degree. Uh, stuff I've talked about before. The trans woman in prison row has exposed the sheer derangement of the modern left. Ain't it just, our Judy? So here we go. I'm going to go through it. Trust the Italians to know what a woman is. The land where the twin peaks of femininity are the mama and the sex bomb has a separate jail exclusively for trans women. How interesting is that? Could this be an answer to the gender-bending get-into-jail-free cards that are currently causing a kerfuffle in Britain? A reference there by Julie to the situation in Scotland. Julie continues. Converted from a former woman's prison in 2010, this jailhouse rocks. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Not only is it near Florence, handy for those art-appreciating days out, but it also has a library, a recreation centre, a football pitch, and agricultural land which produces olive oil and wine. Inmates have their own rooms for those private little feminine toilette moments, such as rinsing one's scrotum. <laughs> this woman gets it! And are given, and people are, and people are given personal development plans according to the Herald. I don't know if these are about hair, makeup, and wardrobe, which trans women seem to believe are all you need to change sex. Trans women's one word. Go, Julie. Or you need to change sex, or something more profound. But anyway, it sounds about as boutique as a penitentiary can be. I bet they've even got a couple of those big seashells on the reception desk. <laughs> In the current trans debate, both sides see their humanity and dignity disrespected by either of the options on offer. Make people with penises use male facilities, even if they answer to Penelope, versus allow female facilities to be swamped in male genitalia. Yet whenever a third way is suggested, like the Italian prison solution, it's notable that the trans activists get very cross indeed. This is telling. If they, really, if they really fear male violence in public conveniences or other sex-segregated spaces as much as they claim, a third option would be perfectly acceptable to them. But if their desire is to gain access to women's private spaces, then they will hold out for that option. Isn't that interesting? She uses the word desire. I mean, deliberately so, obviously. Jordan Peterson said as much, didn't he? <coughs> what he said? <coughs> Any practitioner worth their salt knows that men get off on this. <sighs> Judy Birchall and Jordan Peterson say the same thing. That's a juxtaposition. I never thought I'd come across. <laughs> only a very silly person indeed, continues Judy, believes that trans women are only ever shrinking violets who just want to press wildflowers and urinate sitting down. Many of them are dirty great bruisers who could easily work as bouncers if the bottom fell out of the sissy porn market. She gets it. Make no mistake, trans rights is the first liberation movement, both inspired and fueled by pornography. Various age and trials of a woman's life can be sexualised, from the trans predilection for dressing up as little girls, to the ghastly fake babies, brackets, don't ask, close brackets, I concur, don't ask, right, which allow men to ape gestation and childbirth. Lesbians, of course, are the most loved and hated targets of these autogynophiles, which is thoroughly in line with porn-scorned desires. Porn-scored porn desires. 
Films and television shows set in prisons have always been popular, whereas men in prison, from Cool Hand Luke to the Shawshank Redemption, would be portrayed as undergoing some spiritual journey. Female jails in TV and film are all about the sex, with the added thrill for sadistic voyeurs that these are the one group of females who really have nowhere to run. They, only uniquely, they are uniquely vulnerable, with only 1% of female inmates in Britain having committed violent crimes. A third of women's criminal convictions nationwide are for not paying the BBC licence fee. An inconvenient fact to remember the next time you hear some self-righteous Radio 4 talking head bleating on about poverty and compassion. This is so good. Incarcerated women have been failed by society every step of the way. You know, you remember I mentioned Owen Jones warbling on about it. Why aren't they talking about the number of women? I know what you know, it's nonsense the other day. When Judy Bindle has been talking about it for years. And Judy Birchall has as well. You know, women have been telling us this for a very long time. Now, to take the wretchedness, meaning of women incarcerated, to another level, they are asked to meekly submit to an experiment in which convicted rapists are placed among them. The fact that privileged female MPs who call themselves feminists, feminists put the porn fueled desires of men, even of rapists, over the rights of the most vulnerable women in society is a very bad look indeed. I love her use of words. I think that's referencing that idiot on Question Time. This man is a rapist. No, she didn't say man. She, this person is a rapist. Oh, fuck off. Over the rights of the most vulnerable women in society is a very bad look indeed. Our, leader labing, our, oh, our leading labour trans maids brilliant. Like Emily Thornberry and Lisa Nandy, so desperate for a crumb of power in the party that they will cheerfully sell out other women. Yes, yes they are, Julie. Their silence in the face of male bullying of their brave colleague Rosa Duffels, Duffield speaks volumes. No wonder J.K. Rowling tweeted Orwell's chillingly appropriate quote from 1984 in response to this issue. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final most essential command. There's still time for Labour women to learn a lesson from the awful example of Nicola Sturgeon, ruler of McGilead across the border, and her humiliating retreat over gender self-identification. She now claims that trans women are women only until they break the law, in which case they're now not women. That's it, in Nicola, the game's up, you old trout. Unlike born women, who of course remain women no matter their crimes. Now, even the incels in thongs are turning on the trans maid in chief. It's glorious to watch. Those Labour women who don't, she didn't say that, I said that. Those Labour women who don't care about what happens to incarcerated women show not just a lack of empathy they love to bang on about so much. They also reveal yet more of the luxury beliefs that help their party lose the Red Wall. Just as they don't care about mass economic migration because they've never been priced out of their jobs, although we can but hope, they're not worried about prisons because they won't ever go to prison. Their dismissiveness is palpable. Small-minded people... They've got a small mental geography. They've probably got a small real geography too. It all recalls the chilling words of singer Lily Allen. That's pushing it. Right? After the scale of the grooming gang's atrocities broke, when a social media follower asked her if the victims might have been spared, their dreadful ordeals, if the attackers had not been allowed into the UK, she replied, actually, there's a strong possibility they would have been raped and abused by somebody else at some point. That's a dark one, isn't it? Senior figures in the Labour Party are now beginning to refer to the trans war as Keir Starmer's very own anti-Semitism scandal, with Baroness Hayter telling the Sunday Times that Labour MPs are increasingly worried about the abuse they and their staff suffer from the vociferous tram lobby, trans lobby and its parliamentary pawns. Interesting. Hmm. Baroness Hayter, not familiar with her, I'll have to have a look. Baroness Hayter said, like anti-Semitism, when it was first called out in the party and people were saying it was all being exaggerated and overblown, they are trying to squash us and stop us from raising it. But this is misogyny. Unlike the anti-Semitism row, however, there is a certain grim humour involved, simply because of the literally surreal nature of the claim behind all the brouhaha that men can magically become women. That's a wonderful, wonderful... I'm going to read it again. Unlike the anti-Semitism row, there is a certain grim humour involved simply because of the literally surreal nature of the claim behind all the brouhaha that men can magically become women. That's so true, you know? 
sometimes you laugh because you want to cry or cry because you want to laugh. You know, it's just so insane. Brilliant, Julie, thank you, brilliant. Inevitably, a transgender murderer in a Scottish prison, Sophie Eastwood, formerly Daniel, jailed for life after strangling his cell cellmate with a pair of shoelaces, has told the prison governor that he intends to wear nappies and eat baby food. A report from last year suggests his demands are being taken seriously and that the murderer has already been supplied with a dummy. He must be wanking himself to oblivion, to oblivion on that. Judy Birchall did not say that. I did. I can't wait for the day the dummies on the Labour benches in Westminster stand up with straight faces for a male murderer's perfectly reasonable right to have his nappy changed by prison guards. By then, of course, if this dance macabre carries on as it is, there won't be any more spirited women left in the People's Party. All Labour will have is, 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 sorry, is a sorry bunch of trans panderers pretending to be feminists while throwing the weakest females in our society to the wolves in ewes clothing. Well, Judy, thank you so much. Um, that's, a, that's a strikingly good article, and I hope that you will all take the time to read it. The links are, of course, in the Dubras. It raises so many points of discussion. It does so in a brilliantly written um, and scathing way, which is how this should be dealt with. Um, I've no doubt about it. It's time to stop. Take, take the gloves off. It's time to take the conversational gloves off. Let's call things what they are. Let's stop playing this game. Let's stop using their vocabulary. Um, and let's start saying no, firmly and strongly. I am now, I mean, I've moved myself on this issue. I am now I've convinced um, that the only thing that is going to bring us back to sanity, um, and this is only a very small step in removing critical social justice from everywhere, is that the GRA needs to be repealed and the Equality Act needs to be amended. It's that simple. Um, that is the only way we're going to stop this, and that's not something I say with any glee. It's just something I think we need to do. And I think those kinds of decisions, which have large uh, sweeping political statements behind them, is the type of thing that we need politicians of courage to be able to do. That's what we need. All right. Thanks, Julie. It was cracking. All right. Goodbye, folks. I'll see you again shortly. <laughs>